Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In this video, we're going to be setting up Ninja Gas and some Ninja Combat. This video is sponsored by Ninja Bear Studios, and let's go ahead and get started. So in our project, the first thing we're going to do is head over to Edit, go to Plugins, and just make sure that you enable Ninja Combat and Ninja Gas. It's going to ask you to restart, so go ahead and do that. And now let's configure the Asset Manager. So we're going to head over to Edit, go to Project Settings, and down here under game, you're going to see a tab called asset manager. So the gas system uses a primary data asset and soft reference to initialize common ability elements for our actor. So let's go ahead and register this. So in our array of primary asset types to scan, I'm simply just going to add one like so a new element, and I'm just going to call this ability bundle data. And now for the asset base class, I'm going to look for the ninja gas, the ninja gas data asset, and I'm going to add an element for our directories and i'll just do slash game slash data slash ability if you have a specific directory for your data assets make sure to set that in the primary asset type registry as well and now under the rules i'm just going to make sure that this cook rule is set to always cook and now let's go ahead and set up our ninja combat so i'm just going to right click on my content and show in explorer it's going to open up my folder and i'm going to go up the hierarchy to my project like so and then I'm going to go to my config folder and I'm going to open up my default game.ini. So at the bottom, I'm simply just going to copy paste this, which is on the documentation itself. And this will give us our ability system globals. So I'll go ahead and hit save. And this is going to be in the description below. So you can just copy it from there and make sure this is saved. I'm simply just going to open my default engine.ini. And over here, I want to add some collision channels. So again, I'll go under collision channels and just copy this. And this will again be in the comments or description down below. And I'll just go to the bottom again and just paste it like so. And as we can see from our collision channel, this is going to give us our melee weapon channel and our projectile. So I'll go ahead and hit save and I'm actually going to close my project and restart it. So now I'll go ahead and boot up my project. So now I'm going to assign these collision channels in my combat settings. So I'm going to head over to edit, go to project settings. And on the left, I'm going to look for a ninja combat under game. And now you'll see something called melee combat and range combat. And for the melee combat, I'm going to change this melee scan channel to weapon. And if you did it properly, you should see both weapon and projectile pop up here. And then for the range combat, I'm going to leave this. I'm going to change the projectile channel from visibility to projectile like so. And now I'm going to go over to my BP third person character or my default pawn class. And in my blueprints folder, just double click to open this up. And in here, our character class must have the combat manager component added to it. So I'm going to under components, I'm going to click add and look for the combat manager like so. And you'll see this ninja combat manager. Let's go ahead and add that. I'm going to leave the name as ninja combat manager. And now I need to add this combat system interface. So in order to do that, I'll go to my class settings. And then under the implemented interfaces, I'm just going to look for that combat system interface like so. And now on the left, you'll see the interfaces tab pop up. And I simply want to return the combat manager from the get combat manager function. So you'll see this get combat manager. And I'm going to drag out the component and just connect it to this return value like so. And then I'll hit compile and save. And if you want to use the provided combat character movement component, make sure to override the default one simply by going over to the character movement. And then next to component class, I'm going to select this drop down and change this to the ninja combat character movement component. And I'll hit compile. And now if I were to go ahead and hit play, you'll see it moves exactly as so. And I actually spawned a second character just because I was playing with the replication of this. So yeah, feel free to ignore that. And now back in my content browser, I'm simply just going to right click and create a new folder. And I'll just call this something like gas and I'll go ahead and go in the folder. And now I want to create a data table using the attribute metadata as the row type. But instead on the documentation, they actually have a JSON data that we can simply import as a JSON file. So right here, if we click this plus line, It'll expand to give us our ninja combat attribute set dot health, max health, max health add, and so on. So I'm going to click on this copy button over here to make sure it's copied. And now I'll just go ahead and open up notepad and paste that in here like so. And then I'll hit control S to save. And I'm just going to save this on my desktop and choose all files as the save as type. And I'll call this something like um, DT for data table underscore test dot JSON. Make sure it has that dot JSON at the end because it is a JSON file. So I'll go ahead and save it. And now back in my project, I just want to find the file wherever I saved it. So I saved this onto my desktop like so. So it'll say DT underscore test.json. And I'm just going to drag this in and it's going to say choose data table row type. 
and we have to select the attribute metadata like so. I'll just hit apply. I can double click to open this up and you can see that it already has our set health, max health. It has all these attributes for us ready to go. And that's perfect. So now let's go back and actually create our gas setup. So I'm going to right click. And what I love about Ninja Bear Studios is it simply has the gas setup right here. You can simply right click and it'll show a bunch of things. There's also going to be more for factions, input and so on. So by the time you're using this, you'll probably see the others as well. So I'm going to go ahead and select gas setup and I'll just call this something like DA underscore ninja and double click to open this up. And now we're going to be greeted with default attribute set, gameplay effects, gameplay abilities, and initial gameplay tags. So I'm going to add a new entry to the default attribute set by clicking this plus sign. And I'll expand the index like so. And the attribute set class that I want to select is going to be the ninja combat attribute set. And for the attribute table, we're going to add that data table that we created called DT underscore test. And now under our default gameplay effects, let's go ahead and instance here. And for the gameplay effect class, I'm simply just going to add the combat effect underscore replenish stamina. This will be useful for us later. And now let's go back to our third person map and right click. And we're simply going to create a gas compatible player state that comes with Ninja. So I'm going to simply just right click on blueprint. And then under all classes, I'm going to look for something called the Ninja gas player state like so. And then I'll go ahead and select that. And I'll just call this something like BP underscore ninja player state. And I'll double click to open this up. And now you'll see that there is already a predefined ability system component here. And when I click on this, I can simply just select the default ability setup and select that DA underscore ninja, the data asset that we configured, which is this. And I'll go ahead and hit compile and save. And now let's go back to our third person map and set our BP ninja player state to our player state class like so. Now I want to open up my BP third person character, double click to open that up and I'll go to class setting and I want to reparent this to our ninja gas player character. So I'm simply just going to click on this drop down and search for ninja gas player character like so and hit compile and save. If you simply just want your ability system component on your character, you can just use the ninja gas character as opposed to the ninja gas player character. But for my case, I want to reparent this to the ninja gas player character. And after we've reparented this, I'm going to go back to third person map and just click play and actually test this out. So in my console, I'm just going to hit the tilde key, which is on the left of the one and type in show debug ability system like so. And you should see all of your stats displayed as so. And the font is very tiny, but you can go ahead and actually just configure this in your data table. So for example, let's set my health to something like 500. I'll hit save and go back and type show debug ability system. And now we can see here that our health has changed to 500 as listed right here. And the show debug ability system helps us see all types of states and attributes that we need to see in order to actually debug our gameplay ability system. And that's pretty much how you set up gas in combat. Thanks for watching Coded Row. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. And in the next video of this playlist, we will begin creating a mail. Thanks for watching. And until next time, thank you.